Welcome to the Authorize.net Developer Training for Mobile Payments. In this module, you will learn how to add the ability to accept card payments within your mobile application. To begin, let's talk about mobile security. Mobile devices are vulnerable to the same risks as personal computers, but they also offer additional communication features that can increase the potential of security risks. To minimize these risks, sensitive data should never be stored on mobile devices. This includes payment card numbers, track data, or your API login ID or transaction key. For mobile payments, the PCI Security Council has created the PCI Mobile Payment Acceptance Security Guidelines for developers. The guidelines are specifically for software developers and mobile device manufacturers and provide guidance on designing appropriate security controls for accepting mobile payments. To review the Mobile Payment Acceptance Security Guidelines document, please visit the PCI Security Standards website. In addition, the Standards, Compliance, and Security Developer Training video is available in the Developer Center. Authorize.net supports a number of security features for mobile payments. For increased security, a new mobile device must be registered and approved in the merchant interface before it can be used. If you are testing your application, the registration and approval step must be performed in both the sandbox and the production environment. We'll cover the registration process in more detail shortly. Once registered and approved, Merchants simply log in to the mobile app with their merchant interface login ID and password to accept mobile payments. Remember, your application should never store those credentials on the mobile device itself. Mobile devices can be disabled within the merchant interface if they are no longer being used or are lost or stolen. Next, let's take a closer look at authentication and session tokens. Authorize.net uses a secure, user-based authentication method for integration with mobile applications. To authenticate to the payment gateway, your application will need to prompt the user for their login ID and password. The application must also obtain a unique device ID from the operating system for each device. If the login is successful, a session token is returned by the gateway. An error message is returned if the login is unsuccessful. Every successful API call to the payment gateway returns a new session token, which you must include with each new API call. For increased security, session tokens time out after 60 minutes of inactivity and remain valid for a maximum of eight hours. If no payment or reporting requests are received by the payment gateway, or the 8-hour maximum has been reached, the session token expires. The application should then prompt the user to re-enter their login ID and password so a new session token can be returned. In a typical integration, the first API call would be the mobile device login request. If successful, your application can begin submitting transactions. If an error is returned, it may indicate one of the following conditions. The mobile device is not registered for this payment gateway account. This error indicates that your application needs to submit a mobile device registration request. After registration, the device will be listed in the merchant interface in a pending approval state. If the payment gateway returns, the mobile device is pending approval. Your application should remind the user to have an account owner or administrator approve the registration request in the merchant interface. If the payment gateway returns an error that the login ID or password is incorrect, your application should prompt the user to re-enter their login ID and password. Next, let's discuss the types of transactions that can be performed on mobile devices. Using the Create Transaction Request, you can submit transactions including Authorization and Capture, Authorization Only, Prior Authorization and Capture, Voids, 
and credits. You can also use the Transaction Details API to obtain transaction details for this device. Please refer to the Transaction Details API documentation in the Developer Center for more information. Now, let's discuss the required elements to submit a transaction. Transactions submitted from mobile devices must include the Merchant Authentication block, which includes the login ID, a valid session token, and the unique mobile device ID. The last required element is the Transaction Request block, which must include, at a minimum, the amount, payment card number, expiration date, and card code. You should also review the documentation in the Developer Center for additional fields that may be available. For more information about accepting mobile payments, please visit the Developer Center at developer.authorize.net forward slash mobile. This concludes this section of the Authorize.net Certified Developer Training.